Welcome to the Workbench of Practical Design. My name is Steven, and today we're going to be discussing how to connect our motion sensor with the Dream Player, as well as how to set the configuration file for proper playback with our sensor. So, let's get started. Okay, let's review our setup. We have a Dream Player light, DC power coming in, set of stereo computer speakers, and then of course, the motion sensor. When you receive your motion sensor, it's going to have three wires. The wires that you see in this video may or may not match what you actually receive, but we will label the wires with a V, a T, and a G. V standing for voltage, T standing for trigger, and G representing ground. So let's go ahead and see exactly where we connect all these wires. So we just have those three wires and they're all going to be connected to these terminal strips but let's start with the V which is how you're going to power your motion sensor. V standing for voltage this is going to go and connect to the control output the 9 volt label on that so it's that upper terminal strip position and that's where V is going to connect. The ground and the G marked wire is going to go to the top of the trigger input terminal strip and then the one labeled T for trigger it's going to go onto the bottom terminal strip right here. So again it's going to be voltage, ground, and trigger. Okay and that's pretty much it. It's just the three wires and that's all you have to do in order to connect up your motion sensor. So let's go ahead and test that. We're going to go ahead and apply power here. And one thing that I do want to note is that the motion sensor will take a moment or two, uh, roughly about a minute, and that's just so it can warm up and actually get position fixing in the room and kind of get relative points. For example, if it's like a, you have a shelf in your room and you have the motion sensor set up right next to that shelf, it's just going to figure out, okay, exactly where is that shelf? or where's the piece of furniture. So it's just gonna take a moment or so, about a minute like I said, and then you should be ready to go. So once this red LED goes off, we'll go ahead and apply the speaker power. So let's go ahead and activate this motion sensor. This is an example of combining a motion sensor with the dream player. If the file continues to play, then the sensor is still activated. If the sensor is not active, then the file will play to the end and stop. So our voiceover file there gave a pretty good example and explanation of how to run the Dream Player. So let's try that again. This is an example of combining a motion sensor. As you can see, it's pretty sensitive and detects pretty small movements. If the sensor is not active, then the file will play to the end and stop. So those are the actual connections on the motion sensor. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we set up the configuration file. Here's all the contents on my SD card. So as you can see, I have some different WAV files as well as a PDI for the firmware revision and the configuration file. So let's take a look at that configuration file. This in its state right now is actually how it will look when it comes directly from us off our website or off the enclosed CD. A lot of the features are disabled a feature that is disabled is noted by the pound sign or the hash mark on the left hand side here. That means that feature is not active. So for example, a standard factory setting dream player will have two features active. This one here, the control play, as well as the fade time. But what we're going to do today, we're going to focus on the trigger input section right up here. And we're just going to change two lines in order to make this dream player realize, oh, I'm working with the motion sensor. And the two lines we're going to change are the loop wall trigger. The reason we're going to change this one is because if the motion sensor is still activated, like if people are still moving around, you'll want the file to continue looping. So we'll go ahead and remove the pound sign, which will make this feature active. And then we will also make the no retrigger active because it wouldn't be really helpful if 
the motion sensor decided to fade out because somebody else approached the motion sensor and activated it again. So if you have a motion sensor and that no re-trigger is not active, I know it's kind of a, a double negative here. So the no re-trigger meaning active means just as long as soon as somebody walks in front of it, it's gonna play that track to the end no matter what. No matter how many people walk in front of it or how many times it's activated, it's gonna play to the end no matter what. So those are really just the two lines that you need to change in order to make this motion sensor work. Your configuration file will just have these four features active. Assuming you want to keep the control play on the output as well as the fade time as 5000 milliseconds, assuming you want to have those still in their standard state. But basically, all you need to change are these two names, the loop while trigger and the no re-trigger to make those active and the dream player will function with the motion sensor and really that's all there is to it just make sure to do control s or just go ahead and go up here and save the file just make sure you save it before you exit it because it wouldn't be really good if you exited this and did not save it so there you go my configuration file is now ready for a dream player and that's really all there is to it now you know how to connect your motion sensor to the dream player as well as how to set the configuration file. If you need any help setting up your motion sensor or with your particular project, feel free to contact me or any one of the knowledgeable staff here at Pricom. Otherwise, good luck with your project.